Thank you. All right. Well, the market's clearly still on edge this morning. Investors waiting for any clues on the health of the economy. Today, we get two reports on the housing sector. We have Case Schiller coming out at 9 a.m. Eastern. We're expecting to see June home prices rise 5 percent from a year ago. And July, new home sales are due out at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Economists there expect that uh, that to come in at 521,000. So for more on this, we want to bring in Digital Risks' Jeff Taylor. Uh, welcome to you. Jeff, obviously a huge morning as far as housing market is concerned, but how does this play into the big picture? I think in the big picture right now, obviously, the markets are in turmoil. But sometimes you look at a sector and you look at the housing market, all the major indicators are up right now. Builders confidence is at an all-time high since 2005. The second home sales is up 10% year over year. That's a high since 2007. And interest rates taking a dip over the last couple of days could fuel a mini refinance uh, boom. So the point that we have is, you know, many markets are in turmoil right now, but the housing sector could benefit from this. All right. So as far as housing is concerned. So buy a house instead of stocks? <laughs> refinance. I don't think you're going to be rushing to buy right now, but basically if I could refinance my house and I've been thinking about it for a while and I get that opportunity, it might be another opportunity to do that. How big of of a decision, um, how much of the, does the stock market weigh on someone's decision to buy a home? It's confidence games, right? So basically, if I'm w- waiting to make the biggest purchase potentially in my life, and mm-hmm. all of a sudden I see my portfolio fluctuating greatly every single day, it probably makes me pause and say, is this the actual right time for my overall portfolio to make that big purchase? So I'd be counterintuitive sometimes. So where's the biggest play to go into the market right now when it comes to the housing numbers? You want to go into home builders? You want to go into Home Depot, Lowe's? What's the best play right now off of that? really well. That's a great question. Yeah, actually, I think the builders, I think that that supply chain, the home builders and Lowe's, that still basically has just gotten rebuilt after being totally shattered in the 2008 market. And there's still a lot of pent up demand in many areas of the country for new construction. So if I'm going to make a play right now, more than the builders, I'm going into the supply chains, the Home Depots and Lowe's. One of the interesting things we saw yesterday is actually for the first time ever, we saw the volatility of the Russell 2000 close below the S&P 500. And that's never happened before. And that goes back into the American consumer. There's smaller cap yeah. stocks and, and there is a lot of housing in that. Do you see the volatility of the S&P 500 flowing through to consumer confidence um, and, and housing? You know, I think it's the, not just the S&P, but I think it's the broader markets right now. If I'm a consumer right now, and again, I'm looking at everything I'm trying to do in that major purchase. I mean, housing's all about that first time, that home buyer and that major purchase. I'm probably a little bit on the skittish side before I'm going to make a purchase, but a refinance opportunity might be heading their way. There's obviously a change in, in sentiment, too, when you look at the, a generational change in yeah. sentiment about buying a home. You're saying first time buyers dropped to 28 percent in July, according to the National Association of Realtors. Um, I, I'm telling you, as we watch this stock market volatility, though, it's just it, it, it wears on people who are new to the markets or they're starting to contribute to their 401ks. Yeah. You've already got the millennial generation that's hesitant on buying a home. They don't trust the market. Right. They say this every time we talk to them. Uh, the millennial generation says this is because they saw their parents suffer and go through the, the last recession. And I think that's where we are. I think you make a great point. I mean, 28 percent in July. Typically, first-time home buyers are 40, 43 percent of a new market. It's not getting stronger right now. So what's going to take for these guys to come back in is a big psychological ch- shift, which is going to take a period of time where they see some stability, and it's still it's not It's called there. parent foot on butt. Get out of my house. I'm sick of you living here. I'm long housing for that very reason. And who does, Who wants to live with their parents if they're 28? Well, you know, it's funny. 42 percent on a recent survey we did, 42 percent of first-time home buyers are getting the down payment from their parents. So it's, yes, get out of my no, house. You can, oh, people always poo-poo this, but you can get your down payment from your 401k plan. Take a loan, yep. get out of your 401k plan. You're borrowing money from yourself. It's yours. Borrow it. You're paying yourself interest. Yep. It's the, I mean, that that may, might hurt when you have a market downdraft. That might hurt new, the kind of marginal first-time home buyer. It's a great point. It's just a matter of have the millennials had enough time to actually save much to put in their 401k plan. Mm. So it's, what options do they I, have? I think the one thing holding up millennials is that they're really, they, they tend to be more transient. They they like to yeah. move around a lot. So buying a home. Meaning they're not keeping a job more than a year. All right, Jeff Taylor, <laughs> thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you, Sandra.